Notice what he did. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent, set it upon a pole, and it shall come to pass that every one that's bitten when he looketh upon it shall live. And Moses made a serpent of brass, put it upon a pole, and it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. And this is a marvelous lesson, you see. They're to look at the brazen serpent, and they're to look in faith. In fact, they wouldn't look if it was not faith. I can well imagine that many a man, and when I say many, I don't know how many there were, that would say, well, that seems like nonsense to me. I want something else. I want something more tangible than just turning around looking at a serpent of brass. And he didn't do it, and he would die, of course. And this is a great lesson. And you don't have to guess at what this means, because when our Lord was talking to Nicodemus that dark night, you remember what he said to him? He says, As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Now, how was the Son of Man lifted up? Well, you say, on a cross, yes, but he was lifted up what? He was dying for Barabbas, and Barabbas was a thief. He was a murderer. He was guilty and worthy of death. But Jesus wasn't. But our Lord was made sin for us. And on that cross, he's not only taking Barabbas' place, he's taking your place, and he's taking my place. And so he could say, as Moses lifted up the serpent, In the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever now believeth in him might not perish, but have everlasting life. And God permitted this and did this because he loved you, but he just can't save you by his love. You see, it doesn't say God so loved the world that he saved the world. Not that at all. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son. Now, my friend, the only thing God asks you to do is to look, look and live, look and live, look to Christ. He is taking your place there. You're a sinner. You deserve to die. He does not deserve to die. Now, we read here that this is the thing that was done. And those that look, they live. Those that did not, they died. And it's just that simple today. Either you're looking to Christ as your Savior, because you're a sinner, or you're not doing it, friends. And if you're not doing it, I don't care how many times you've been baptized. I don't care how many ceremonies you've been through. And I don't care how many churches you've joined. And I don't care who your father and mother happen to be. You are a lost, hell-doomed sinner until you look to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, it's just as simple as that. And by the way, it's just as complicated as that. Oh, the problem that people have today, the sinner, to look to Christ and to trust Him when he wants to look to himself and his own good works there and think that somehow or another his own good works might save him.